So we start with uh, the production possibility curve. That's chapter three. Uh, production possibility from here, which is the same as production possibility curve. So here I wrote, the PPF shows the different combinations of economic goods that an economy is able to produce if all resources are fully and efficiently employed. What we're saying is this. The PPF, it only shows us the maximum of goods or se and services that an economy can produce if all resources are well managed. That is fully used. That means efficiently used. Do you understand? So if all resources are efficiently used, we call it uh, productive, uh, product, uh, productive efficiency. So if all resources are fully used, then there is there's possibility that we are able to maximize our output. That is what production possibility curve is talking about, or production possibility frontier. I think it's clear. Mm -hmm. The maximum of goods and services that this economy can produce with the given resources available, if they are well managed. Is it clear? That means you, are f you use them efficiently. Okay. Is it clear? Yeah. So, for the PPC, what happens with the PPF? It has a margin. The margin is what we call the point at the point of the possible change. So the PPF can go outward or inward. So the margin is that point at which it could either go up or outward or inward. So what we call margin the, the point of possible change. Is it clear? Yeah. Put that in your mind, please. Now, because there's PPF or PPC, there's need to be what we call opportunity cost. Because the PPF illustrates the principle of opportunity cost. So in your PPF, it will only mean that certain products will be produced while you sacrifice others. Because we are talking about finite resources. Resources that are not resources that are limited in supply. So because these resources are limited in supply, it only means that we cannot produce different products at equal level of output. Do you understand? Yeah. So either we produce more of this and less of that, or we produce more of that and less of this. So we cannot produce at equal level whatever we produce in any economy. That's why we have what we call the PPF, which tells us the maximum we can produce with a given resources. Okay. Is it clear? Yeah. So look at what I wrote about opportunity cost. Like I said the PPA, I wrote the PPF clearly illustrates the principle of opportunity cost, which I just said. As an increase in the production of a certain good may reduce the production of another. So if certain goods are increasing in terms of output, it could mean that some other goods production has fallen. Is it clear? Then we go to economic growth or decline. You have to take note of something. Before we talk about economic growth and decline, any economy, it cannot produce outside its PPF. Do you get what I'm saying? No. Any economy would not be able to produce outside the PPF. Because we said the PPF is the maximum you can produce. Yeah. So that means outside the PPF, you cannot. Do you understand? So now let's go to economic growth now and economic decline. For economic growth, what is economic growth? Economic growth means that the activity of the economy is moving fine. It's improving. So it means that your PPF has moved outward. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So look at what I wrote here. This implies that the PPF of an economy has shifted outward. So when the PPF of an economy shifted, shifts outward, it means that there's economic growth. And how does this happen? One, it could happen if the quantity, the quantity of resources available for production increases. The, the quantity of resources you need for your production increases, yeah. such as workers. If the numbers of workers increases in an economy, that could increase your output. That could increase your production. If, the, if new factories are built or new offices are built, that means new services will, re will be rendered. That also increases the PPF or the PPC. This is in quantity. Oh. So the difference between the quantity and the quality. So for quantity, this is what I just said now. For quantity, it means the number of workers, the number of offices available, the numbers of factories built. Okay. Are you with me? Yeah. So if these things increases, then your PPC might shift outward, which means economic growth. Also, if the quality, 
of resources available for production increases, your PPC will also shift outward. What are the quality of production we're talking about here? Education, training. These things will improve workers. Workers are quantity of production, right? Workers are in quantity. But how do these workers improve? They improve in terms of being trained and being educated, right? So education will improve your skills. Education and training will improve your skills. Mm -hmm. it, will, it, will, it will improve your, it will increase your efficiency. That means your productivity will increase. So as a result of this, your PPF or your PPC will shift outward. Machines, technical process, technical progress will be, there will be technical progress, which means machines will be utilized to increase output. Factories will build machines. Machines will be able to be used. So factories are quantity. Machines are quality because they are used as, as for the technical progress. Is it clear? Do you understand economic growth here? So economic growth implies that there's outward shift in your PPF. Then, we go to economic decline. For economic decline, it's the opposite of economic growth. It means that instead of outward, it's shifting inward. Okay? So look at what I wrote here. This implies that the PPF shifts inward. Here, the production possibility, the productive potential of an economy has fallen. So the productive potential of this economy has, fall, has fallen. Then there's economic decline. Do you understand that? Then we go to consumption versus consumption versus investment. What is consumption? Consumption implies that the product that it implies to the production of consumer goods. So we if we continue to produce consumer goods, we are producing for consumption. That is consumption. That's why I wrote consumption is the production of consumer goods. Mm -hmm. For example, food, DVD, clothes. These are consumer goods. Is it clear? Yeah. Then what is investment? Investment is the production of capital goods. Investment. Yeah, it's the production of capital goods. You are investing. Mm -hmm. So that means you want to produce further. You want to increase your wealth as an economy. That is what investment means, increasing the wealth of an economy. Mm -hmm. That's why we said investment is what? The, pro the production of capital goods. Is it clear? Yeah. So... Consumption versus investment. An economy that focuses on consumption, production of consumer goods. In the short run, in the short run, it could be wealthy. But in the long run, it will become poor. Because everything is about eating. No production, no investment. But an economy that is investing in capital goods, in the short run, might not progress, but in the long run, will be more wealthier than, yeah. than the former. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So that's why we talk about consumption versus investment here. When you focus more on consumption, in the short run, you will be okay, but in the long run, you would have used all your, you would have eaten everything off. But when you focus on investment right now, it's a long term reward. Is it clear? Consumption is a short-term reward. Investment is a long-term reward. Any question about that? No. Good. Now we go to efficiency. Efficiency means getting it right, doing it well, being able to minimize cost, being able to minimize waste, being able to minimize inefficiency. That is efficiency. So look at what I wrote here. Economic efficiency implies to an economic state which every resources is optimally allocated while minimizing waste and inefficiency. Resources that are available are optimally allocated. They are well allocated. They are used judiciously. So this means that there is efficiency. So we have two types of efficiency in economics. We have productive efficiency, allocative efficiency. So let's look at productive efficiency. I wrote, this occurs when a given set of resources produces the maximum number of goods. I gave you these resources and you are able to produce the maximum you can produce with these resources. That is productive efficiency. Is it clear? We want to produce 100 bottles of water, and the resources I gave to you was able to produce that 100 bottles of water. That is being productive. Is it clear? Then we have allocative efficiency. For allocative efficiency, it talks about the social welfare. So 
being able to maximize our social welfare, it is allocative efficiency. Who, maximize, who cares about the social welfare? The government. So look at what I wrote here. I said social welfare, this implies to government support. I told you government. Government support intended to ensure that members of the society can meet basic needs, such as food and shelter. Mm -hmm. So this needs has to be met by the government. So being able to maximize our social welfare, our social welfare is what we call allocative efficiency. Being able to produce the maximum you can produce with the given resources is what we call productive efficiency. Do you understand the difference between productive efficiency and allocative efficiency? Yeah. Great. Then the last thing we talk about, we need to talk about is choice. When we talk about choice, remember, the PPF brings up about, it's literally about opportunity cost. Mm -hmm. It says the maximum we can produce. If it says the maximum we can produce, it means that there are other things we cannot produce. So that means there's going to be a choice. So we have to choose. We have to sacrifice. Making the sacrifice is the opportunity cost. Mm -hmm. Making the choice is the real cost. So what is choice? This implies that the PPF does not give indication of which combination of goods will be produced in an economy. The production possibility frontier will not give you the real combination of goods that can be produced. What does it show you? It rather shows you the combination of goods an economy can produce if output we are maximized. It can only show you that, oh, if A, B, C, D are maximized, we can produce D, E, F, and G. It won't tell you that A, B, C, and D can produce G, E, F. No. It will tell you that if it is maximized, if outputs are maximized. Do you understand? So it means that whatever we need to produce, it has to come with making a choice. So making a choice means that you are going to use certain resources for something, and that resources won't be able to be used for other things. That is choice. Do you, do you understand choice here? Mm -hmm. Any question about it? No. So let's go to the questions now.